This is me standing next to my largest mech project I've ever done. Of course, this is not the actual size of the mech. And actually, this is my largest mech project I've ever done. I did this a couple months ago as part of an art challenge that Boilai Hobby Time made. And I needed to build a second one. Just a little bit smaller. That's coming up. Before we dive in, I just wanted to show you. This mech started out its life like this. An 8 pound popcorn container that I had lying around. I didn't want this to go to waste, so I just decided to turn it into a mech. And then recently, I found another container. This is a soap container from the grocery store. 33 fluid ounces of soap and it was just screaming for a pair of legs. So that's what I'm going to do with it. After removing the labels from both sides of the container, I sanded it down so the glue would have something to hold on to. Then I marked out some holes where I was going to cut to mount this cardboard tube into it so I would have some nice core strength. I wanted to have a door and a porch on the back, but I can't put them on with this handle in the way, so we're just going to cut it off and patch up those holes later. For the hips, I have these spaghetti sauce lids that I salvaged from the trash can. All I need to do is punch out the little metal part, and then I have a nice plastic uh, hip base. Next, I cut a little slot into the lid so I could mount a piece of acrylic into it, and this will be the base for our leg. Next, it's time for the metal sheets. To do this, I took some whipped cream lids and cut them up to where I could have a flat surface of just random plastic. I cut this into little squares or other desired shapes, and it's thin enough that it looks like metal sheets, so that's what I'm going for. Now there's this gap on the front of the bottle that I couldn't work around, so I had to plug it up with some cardboard and we'll cover it up with some plastic later. I gave it a nice trim with some 3D printing filament, and then I added a 3D printed vent on the front. Next I'm making an eye, because this is not just a regular mech, this is in fact a droid mech. To make the main eye, I cut up the end of a pen cap and the lens of a toy camera, then glued them both together and glued that onto a broth cap. And then I glued that to the face of the mech. Next, I added a bunch of 3D printed details. One thing you're going to notice is I added a lot of 3D printed details on this one. I feel a little bit guilty about this because not everyone can afford a 3D printer, but it's just so nice to have something that you can just slap on and not have to make it from scratch. 3D printers are perfect for this kind of thing, and I highly recommend that you go and pick up one for yourself. Next, I needed to address this cap. All I needed to do was to tear off the lid, trim it a little bit, shave off the lip thing, and then glue it back on. Next, I made a roof rack out of this sprue from a ModiBot. I just needed to trim off the nubs, and then we've got a perfect square for our roof rack. I made this roof rack the same way I made the roof rack from the previous mech, which means I used the same mesh, which I have no idea what it is. I just glued it on with some super glue and sped up the drying time with some baking soda, and then glued it to the top of the mech. Now I wanted to skip leg day, but these skinny legs need some beefing up. So I took some more pieces of acrylic, this time they were a little bit skinnier, and I put one on each side of the leg. Now the feet were kind of a problem for me until I found this in my bits box. This is the fun part about garbage hunting is that you always get to find interesting bits on the inside. After just taking off the cap of this Loctite bottle, you can discover that they don't actually put as much super glue in it as it looks. Then after digging in it some more, you can pull out this blue piece and oh boy, this is some pretty good garbage. 
This squeeze mechanism means I don't have to work three times as hard as I would have to make the feet, and it's so much easier just to clip it off and glue it on. And bonus, it stands on its own. Nice. Next I added a 3D printed door to the back, and then I also added a porch made of coffee stirring sticks. This is a neat trick I picked up from Studs and Studio. He is a huge inspiration of mine. Then I add a chimney on the side. This is for like a wood burning stove, maybe. Then I add a smokestack on the side made of a marker cap, some more 3D printed details, and a flashlight reflector thing. I'm not really sure what you call this, but it worked pretty well, so that's why I used it. I added some false joints to the legs out of some broth caps. I did the same thing on the first mech as well. I've had this push pop cap for years and it's just been aching for something and I finally decided to use it and turn it into a oil tank of some sort. I just glued some broth caps on each side then glued it to the back and this is also a bonus to hide the hideous hole I made. Oh. Oh no. It's losing balance. Well that's not gonna work. We'll all just have to sneak some hot glue and some metal nuts on the end and then we'll have it all balanced again. Then I added extra details here and there, like a boiler on the end, a small vent for that cap hole, a plastic fog light that I had on hand, and some handrails because the last thing you want is to fall off of a 12 foot moving object and then hit your face on a rock. So handrails are a must. Next, to cover up this hideous hole I made, I'm using a baby food container lid that I had on hand. Then I'm topping that off with a lid from a salt grinder, I think. I'm also adding a wooden mast in the middle because I really just like the looks of masts. Then I'm just adding random details here and there like vents, doors, and vents, and doors, and stuff like that. Oh yes, and I also added some hydraulics made out of a lollipop stick and some Gundam sprues. Oh yes, and another water tank because I'm redundant and I've done it three times already. I also added some wire just to fill in that gap between the lid and the bottle. And then I added some random bits on the roof rack. Let me know in the comments what you think this stuff could be used for. I had this toy machine gun I could use for an antenna. I just clip off the end and then add this onto the side of the mech. Then I added those famous rhinestone rivets to all the panels. Probably should have done this a little earlier though. Oh wow, we're done with construction. You know what that means, it's time to take it outside and give it a coat of matte black spray paint. Now the first color I'll be layering on is a homemade brown from the airbrush, just to give it a base color. Then I'm covering up 50% of everything with a sort of metallic gunmetal blue. Then stippling on a boring regular red. Then stippling on some regular silver. A yellow for all of the tanks. A bronze because everybody loves a good bronze. A silver gunmetal. A copper around the legs. And some brass because why not? Also a little bit of black for the main smokestack. I also added a little bit of yellow to the light, but I actually hate how it turned out, so I'm going to cover it up later. Then I dry brushed the whole thing in a light metallic silver, and dry brushed the main mast with a tan because I had completely forgotten about that. Oh, and the porch as well, because I forgot about that too. I also painted the inside of the mech eye black, you'll see why in a minute. 
And then I gave everything a nice, dirty black wash for detail. Oh yes, and I filled in the eye with some UV resin. The black paint makes it so you can't see very far into the eye. I also stippled on some brown paint so he can track mud through the house. And just like on the first mech, I had to have that rigging. I also gave it some flags. I don't know what these flags symbolize, but maybe it's like mech license plates, maybe. I locked them into their shapes with some Mod Podge, and then after that was dry, I painted them in a blue and an orange. Then I added some Bill Making Stuff rust spots to all of the places that I thought they could use it. Thanks, Bill. Then I dry brushed the feet in a sort of beastie brown. Then I tied all the colors together with a dark brown paint through the airbrush. Just a light pass, though. We don't want to lose all the paint we just put on. And then after this, the model was finished. Consider this the start of a new sci-fi world. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks to everyone who's watching this. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Making mechs out of garbage is one of my favorite things to do. So if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I'll see you on the next video, everyone.